Hi, welcome. Rhythm Strip Lesson Ideas, Get Ready With Me, Back to School Edition 2024, Day 2. Thank you so much to the people that have already been watching and commenting, um, watching below. So don't forget, if you want to be put in the draw for to with your chance to win everything that I'm showcasing this week, which is about $500 worth of resources, probably a bit more, but I didn't, I, I sort of gave up counting after that. Um, make sure you put in the comments watching. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, this only applies to people who are actually watching it on the Facebook page over at Julia Teaching Resources. So, hi, I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and let me stop share. Come on, there we go. Right, hi, I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and I'm a music teacher who's been teaching over 20 years. I've been, I started teaching in 2001 and my I teach kids in grades 7 to 12. So as I said, this year, um, I'm doing a get ready with me back to school event because um, I took a year off from school last year in 2023 and I gave a lot of my, uh, my stuff away at the end of 2022. So I'm literally getting stuff ready for myself. And as I was doing that, I thought, well, why not share what I'm actually going to use in my own classroom from my own resources? And that's what we're doing today. So we're going to be talking rhythm strips and you're probably thinking, what on earth is she talking about? So let me just show you. So Essentially, I like to start the year doing rhythm because it gets kids moving um, in a lot of different ways. But the other thing I really like about rhythm, and when I start putting, and I'll show you in a minute, but when I put a um, set of drumsticks in the kids' hands, and I can actually see if they're using left and right, or if they can use left and right, which is a really hard skill for some kids, um, it gives me a bit of an idea of where they're at. Because believe it or not, there's a lot of tech, a um, lot of research done around it. They call it like crossing the midline and using both hemispheres of the brain with that left and right. And some kids, you'll find if you show them a rhythm and if they're just using one hand, they they're going to struggle. So you need to sort of encourage them to use both hands. And it really is um, for some kids. You'll you'll find that that's a real struggle. And as I said, I um I teach grades seven to twelve, and I'll do this in year seven. We'll do it in my year 11 class when I start with them just to get them going for a bit. But um, I'll show you what I'm talking about anyway. So what I have done, and I'll show you the PDF in a moment, but what I've got is um, these sets of rhythm cards. So can you see that? I'm trying to get the lights not on there. Now, they're all, there's stacks of them. So you could see that this is one set and has different rhythms all the way through. Now there's that set. And I've got 10, but I'm not going to show you all 10. There's another set. Why did I do them on different colors? Because when they get mixed up, it's really easy to sort them out that you put all the green ones together, all the orange ones together, all the yellow ones together. Okay, so there's, yeah, those sets of things. I said, here's another set. I'm not going to show you all 10 because you don't need to, but here's another set. So I put them this time as you can see, on a um, split ring, alrighty, which I get from, um, I've got them from the cheap shops before, but also bought this lot, and this one's sort of broken, I'm going to have to fix, um, get another one, um, from Office Works. but those, those um, I, I call them split rings, but they're not split rings, hinged rings or something I think they're called, um, but anyway, I find it really easy to actually put things together on those, and what it means is, is if when you're doing, oops, don't roll away, Sorry, my drumsticks are nearly rolling away. Um, when you actually don't have them all, um, you know, take them off the thing, the hinge, means you can actually use different activities with them and do different activities with them. Okay, so that's that's why I've got those rhythm strips. So there's these particular ones. Okay, now these ones are actually all come in different. Um, I've got them in quite a few of my resources because they're very handy. And I'll explain how I use them in a minute. So I'm just going to get rid of those for a moment because I've got a few things in front of me. But as I said, that's what the rhythm strips and that's what I'm actually talking about. But how can you use them? So let me show you first the PDF. And this is um, the main way that I actually use them. So let me go share screen again. Hang on, I need to do that first. Where'd they go? Um, sorry. Oh, here they are. All right, helps if I can do it that way, have them up ready for you so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, share screen, that one, okay. 
Alrighty, so you can see this is in the clap, find and color rhythm set. Okay, that's where this actual set you'll find them. And you can see like these are really simple rhythms first up. And most of these rhythms that I've got in these sets are in 4-4. Four, four. Some are in 2-4, 3-4. Four, four, and then later on, I, there's one set that's completely compound time, which is your 3 eighths, 6 eighths, 9 eighths, 12 eighths. But how do I use them? Okay, first thing, generally, I use them with drumsticks. And sometimes with a bucket, but often not. And I literally use them and I do desk drumming, okay? When I put a pair of drumsticks in their hands, they find that um, doing rhythm is actually much more interesting than if we were doing, if I was just getting them to clap it. Now, when I started doing desk drumming, I'll just stop share for a moment so you can see a bit better. But when I started doing desk drumming, we were literally just banging on the desk, okay? It didn't matter. And it, it was, the kids loved it, That was really noisy, which is a bit of an issue for some kids because of, you know, sensory. Um, so you might need to pop them outside um, or put something else on there. But I started realizing that we were putting dents in the desk. The car's been a bit naughty. All right, so then these are actually, <laughs> Um, there's a shop here in, in Australia called Aldi and they had these, um, they're actually supposed to be chopping boards. And what I like about them is this side is actually a bit grippy. So when you put it on the desk, it sort of doesn't slide all over the place. And then they, I got the kids just to um, drum, like drum onto this pad. They were cheap. That's why I got it. I mean, you can certainly go and get yourself some drum pads and all those sorts of things, but let's face it, um, money is usually pretty tight for us music teachers, and I find that these really work. Now, it's funny when I say to the kids, okay, go get yourself a set of sticks and get yourself one of these. Inevitably, I don't know a kid who hasn't done this, sticks this bat through there and starts swinging it around. Um, <laughs> they just all do it. Doesn't matter how old they are. And I'm talking kids in year 11 and 12, they will do it too. Um, but why would I do that? Look, it's a nice way to introduce rhythm. It's a nice way to get them um, started in a class and get them actually moving. Now, I don't do this sitting down. I actually get the kids to stand up and say, okay, like, right, we're doing desk drumming. No sitting, no, you're standing up. Gets the blood moving, gets, their, gets them thinking and um, working musically. So to do that, though, the first thing I usually do is call and response. So I will have those um, those rhythms displayed just like you saw then, okay? And I will I will play the rhythm, one, whatever it happens to be, then they play the rhythm. I play the rhythm, they play the rhythm. And then I'll say, okay, after four, we're gonna play, repeat it four times. One, two, three, four, and then bang, into it. And what I, and the kids, they really like it. And so once we've got a bit of confidence going, I will then start to ask, and this might take a few lessons, okay, who would like to um, actually, you know, play the rhythm that they, you know, sight read it basically, sight read the rhythm for me. And if they're correct, great. Then we say, okay, let's do it together. You're the leader. If they're not correct, I'll say, okay, well, that wasn't quite right. You know, what? who who thinks they can actually do it? And you just keep working your way around the room. I only ever ask for volunteers. I never actually make any kid do it unless they want to do it because um, that's just not fair. Now I'll just share screen again and I will try and find one that's actually got a... I don't think these have got any rests. Okay. Let me just find one. Oh, okay. Here's a set with rests. So when we start doing rests, and I know that, you know, people will go, you know, well, you shouldn't be making a sound. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes you need to make, put something in there because otherwise they naturally start speeding up. So for that top one, if you were doing it, it says one, like in for the rest, I get my kids to click. So it's one click, da, 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 da. Da, 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 et cetera. And it means that when they're doing that click, they're actually getting themselves to actually um, put a bit of space in there. So otherwise it's dumb. Da, and that you'll find that that, that um, rest is not held for its true value. And that's what I find with um, those with that. And I find that's really, really good. Now, another way I do that, let me just stop share for a minute. Okay. It's obviously bucket drumming. Now, this bucket... I've had for years. Now I have to tell you, a few times I've bought buckets and my husband comes home and he goes, oh, I'd like that bucket. So no, hands off. <laughs> it's not for fishing. <laughs> it's not for you. But he does it every time. But here's the hint. So these buckets, this particular one, I've had the for years. This hasn't been used for bucket drumming. This is one I've actually stolen out of my husband's things because the rest of them at work. But um, when I first started bucket drumming, I found that these broke really quickly. So... 
especially when you had enthusiastic year 10 boys who were making it a competition to break. Um, so what I actually do is this good old duct tape and I will actually tape it and put a few um, bits of tape on there. Okay, firstly, it helps sort of deaden the sound a little bit, a little bit, um, but the uh, but it actually makes them last a lot longer. And that's the other thing. Now, the other hint I want to do for you is because if you're doing um, bucket drumming, this ridge chews up the drumsticks really quickly. So what I do is I will actually use, I actually put electrical tape across the top, like that whole section, not on the handle part, but in that whole section, I just wrap electrical tape again on it. And what it means is that, that the electrical tape starts to get chewed instead of the actual stick. And I've done that probably about three or four years ago and the sticks are still pretty good. Um, and again, because, you know, what electrical tape's like, it's, you know, there's like the black, red, yellow, green, blue. I think they're about the colours, white. The kids will fight over what colour sticks they get. And it's interesting to see who likes to get a pair and who doesn't care what colours they get. And if they're, they're um, uneven, just tells you a little bit about the kids. But as I said, that's that's the main ways I actually use those, um, the rhythms. Now, sometimes though, you can actually do it with a djembe. Now, I pulled my djembe, my actual djembe out the other day and I was really disappointed because I hadn't used it for about 12 months, but my skin had split, so I can't demonstrate. But for, again, I will show you, I'll share that screen again because this was actually a pretty good page for it. And again, same sort of thing, call and response, all that sort of stuff. But again, just putting something different in their hands and again, using that right, left. So if I was using that um, top rhythm, for example, for an example, I always would say to them, okay, crotchets, I call them crotchets. You might call them quarter notes. Um, crotchets, we're going to do in the middle of the drum, a bass sound. And when you see a rest, you're going to clap. Okay, so bass, clap, bass, 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 clap, bass, bass. Now, when we had um, quavers or eighth notes or 16th notes or semi-quavers, I get them to do it at the top. So bass, 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 da, da, bass, 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 da, da. And it's a good way to do that. So if you look at that next rhythm there, bass, bass, da, da, boom, da, 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 da boom. And it really makes um, a lot of fun. And again, do that call, call and response thing. The kids love it. Um, and I love doing that. It's a good one to actually do that. The, then what do you do after that? So you've taught them the rhythms, you've given them some rhythm confidence. What do you do after that? And that's where I'm coming up with some other ideas for you. So the 10 ones that I was thinking for using those rhythm strips, because these are great lessons. What I was just talking about, desk drumming, I will do that normally as a work lesson warm up, or maybe sometimes um, at the end of the lesson. Um, I am mindful because where my classroom is, um, how much noise I'm making. And if there's things happening in the school where I have to be a bit quieter, I won't do desk drumming. You could do it on the floor too, but it's not as much fun. Let's face it, we want to be loud. Okay, so rhythm reading, call and response. As I said, that's just simply any of those. So you could do, as I said, desk drumming, bucket drumming, um, even on your djembes or any other sort of hand drums that you have. Again, you could also do it on percussion instruments, but the kids usually are pretty sick of those. By the time I see them, that's usually all they've had their hands on. Um, desk drumming is fun. Bucket drumming, fun. Then the next thing is to give them the rhythms and say you've just done the whole lesson and you've done, you've prepared yourself and you've gone, okay, we've gone through all the rhythms that are actually in the set. Then you might divide the kids up into different um, groups. So depending on how many kids you've got and how many you want to be in a group and you give them instruments to play and you say, okay, you're all going to do different a different rhythm as an ostinato and you've got to choreograph it. So it might be, how are they actually going to do that? So is it, you know, are they all going left, right? Do you know how they, again, show them how they could do it and to get them to choreograph it. So desk drumming, bucket drumming, choreography, that's a lot of fun. It gets them to actually start moving again. Again, you could do the same sort of thing with body, body percussion. So if, you know, I'm just pulling this rhythm here. So again, you know, is it um, the, the quavers on your, you're slapping the knees and then clap. So it's a bit hard. Da, 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 whatever it happens to be. Okay. And so they can come up with some sort of thing, some sort of sound, or as you know what, yeah. I'm sure you know what I mean, but that's a good fun one to do as well. Body percussion rhythms and choreography. The next one obviously is guess the rhythm. So when the thing, thing is, when I've got, and I'll share that screen again. 
Sorry, I'm trying to find the little thingy. Share screen. Okay, let's just go to a different one. Now, these are this is a different set. This set actually is available in my store as is. Um, it's got my old logo on it, and it is spotty dotty things. Um, but it, you know, it's. I did this one first because I did these as a whole screen. They're really easy to do as a whole screen display. Let me just do that. See what, see what I mean? Like it can take up your whole screen, which is really good. Um, where was I going with that? Sorry. I've just, oh, that's right. Guess the rhythm. Guess the rhythm is actually easier to do with this one. All right. So you've got one, two, three, four, five set on, on your page. And you might say, okay, I'm going to be playing one of them. Which one is it? One, two, three, four, or five. And you literally just play one and you might play it twice. And then you get them to hold up their fingers. It's one, it's two, three, four, five. Okay. And um and see who actually gets it right. And you could those sorts of things, you could actually play it a few times and get kids around classing around the room to actually carve a rhythm. Again, once you've built up that confidence with them, you don't want to do this straight away. Um, but once they've built up that confidence and get them to do that. And the rest of the class has to guess the rhythm. You could sp um, split it into teams. You could do all sorts of things with it that way. But as I, said, I like to use these ones because there's five displayed. Or you might actually make it bigger and say, okay, we're only using those three. Again, just one, two, three. All right. That's the um, idea of doing that one. So that's, that's a lot of fun. The kids, again, like playing games. Um, obviously for rhythmic dictation, okay, so you can um, have the rhythms maybe displayed again depends on how confident your kids are but this is how I do it in the first one and I would say okay I'm going to use four of these rhythms you've got the five displayed I'm going to use four of these rhythms you don't know what order it is but you've actually got to act, uh, work out when I clap the rhythm or you know drum the rhythm or whatever it happens to be what the actual rhythm is and you've got to write it down for yourself so that's another good way to use rhythmic dictation um, now the next one is move freeze rhythm I like doing these ones. So hang on, let me just get that back up. There's something I needed to make sure I got up and had, because I wrote it down so I'd explain it in better words, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so obviously play some music. Doesn't matter what you play, as long as you're playing some music. And get your kids um, moving around. When the music stops, obviously they freeze. When you then, you uh, display one rhythm, and when they um, they actually freeze and you display the rhythm, they've all got to clap it. If they don't get the one, get it correct, they're out. It's an interesting game. It's interesting to see how um, putting pressure on them means they get it wrong. Okay. So that's a good one. Obviously, the other one is to use them for rhythm composition, which I really like. And I've just dropped a couple of those. I'll have to pick them up later. But rhythm composition is so much fun. Again, give them the rhythms and what I like with my year 10s last year yeah they're in year 11 now again I just handed out the whole sets and and gave them enough each so maybe they each group ended up with about seven or eight each say that and out of those rhythms then they have to work out and I'd say okay there's maybe four people in the group you've got to use all eight of those rhythms but you've actually got to use two rhythms as an ostinato so then they'd have to put two rhythms together um, whichever two they chose and each um, rhythm ostinato had to be on a different instrument different percussion instrument and then make it up into something now again I'm saying this for my year 10s and this is actually really really good practice you can do this with um, younger year groups depending on how um, good they are with their rhythm reading but again it's really good I'll be doing this with my year 11s just to get them as not necessarily a formal um, assessment but an informal assessment just to see how they're going you get them to play the rhythms um, uh, you know play their compositions for the class again you could do it as an assessment I don't it's just something that gets them going gets them moving gets them working with each other gets them working musically which is the important thing there because it's all about um, getting them to perform in time that is the main thing getting them to perform in time I'm going to leave that there. Sometimes it's really a struggle to do that. But anyway, and the last one is human rhythm chain. Okay, so sit your kids in a circle around the room or it doesn't matter, they could be sitting anywhere. Again, give them a rhythm each. Now, the thing is with this, 
is you can be um, can do a bit of differentiation. So if you've got kids who are maybe struggling, make sure you give them a rhythm that they can handle. And the other kids, they might give them something that's a bit harder, okay? Um, anyway, but have a think about that. And what they do is, what you do is every kid's got their own rhythm around the room and you've got to keep the beat going. So usually it's me keeping the beat and I'll just go one, two, three, four, okay? And then the first person plays their rhythm, the second one, and they've got to keep it in time. So they have to like be going, okay, that's the four beat, da, 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 and keep it actually going. So that, um, what I call it? I gave it a name, human rhythm chain. So it'd be interesting to see how many times you can get around the room before they make a mistake or before someone actually loses time. Um, I would say that, that most kids struggle with that. And it's interesting to see. So um, especially when you've given them more complicated rhythms. But again, that's an, just another way of getting the kids using rhythm, getting them to actually be involved in it. And again, that human rhythm chain could be on your bucket drums, could be desk drumming, could be on percussion instruments. It doesn't matter what it actually is, as long as it's on some sort of um, they're doing something with it. And that's that's the main part that they actually do that. So as I said, I've given you 10 ideas. So first one. Rhythm reading, call and response. Number two, desk drumming. Three, bucket drumming. Then four, desk or bucket drumming choreography. Five is body percussion rhythms and choreography. Again, getting them to move and, and use their, their body. Guess the rhythm. Okay, so which rhythm am I playing? Rhythm dictation. Again, using the same sorts of things. Move, freeze, rhythm. It's a game. Um, again, that's a good one if you need to bit it with a bit of space. Obviously, using any of those rhythm strips for rhythm composition, as well as a rhythm, human rhythm chain, which is much harder than you think. So as I said, 10 simple ideas for using these rhythm strips. Um, I will be literally, when I actually get into the classroom, these ones will be hanging in my room, you know, on the wall. Um, you can see so that they'll be ready to go whenever I need them. Um, I said I've, I've used them in the past but haven't actually had them set up like this and I can't wait because I did do, do it a little, little bit with other classes um, and I regretted not having a full set. So I've got a full set now so I'm really excited about that. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. So what um, I said we had 10 rhythm lesson ideas. Don't forget to be eligible to win the prize this week you have to be watching every day even if it's the replay I don't mind um because I watch a lot of replays because a lot of things are not in my time zone um but just make sure that you put in the comments watching it's because I'll be looking to see who's actually uh, commenting watching and then I'll put you in a draw and um, I'll draw that next Monday my time which will be some people's Sunday so don't forget to do those um and as said there's um, stacks of resources that I'm showcasing this week. Now, to tell you what I'm doing next tomorrow, let me see. Tomorrow, we are looking at games to play in the music classroom. One of my favourite things to do, and it doesn't matter how old the kids are, they love playing games. Okay, and I'm talking year seven to, to year 12. They all love playing games. Anyway, that's it from me today. Until next time, I'm Julia from GU Teaching Resources, and happy teaching. Bye.